Would you let your neighbor redecorate part of your house? Well, if you were able to angle it and go out that way? We gave two couples 500 bucks to revamp rooms in each other's homes, see what they came up with, and find out if it turns neighbors into lifelong friends or bitter enemies. After two weeks of tough competition, it all comes down to this. And the winner walks away with 50 grand in a new car. Tune in and see who goes all the way in the Jeopardy! Team Tournament Finals. Tonight at 7.30 on Cobo 4. On the next live, it's We're Having a Baby Week. Find out the first ten finalists of our beautiful baby search. Plus Daredevil's Michael Clark Duncan and The Bachelorette, Trista Red. Next live, Monday at 9 on Como 4. This weekend, during Levitt's President's Day sale, you're going to get more than you bargained for. Like extra side chairs, lamps, tables, nightstands, and more. All for the same low price. Look for bonus buys throughout the store and extra low sale prices in every department. You'll even get extra time to pay for it all until April 2004. Levitt's President's Day sale is the biggest event of the year, and it starts this weekend. You'll love it at Levitt's. What is the Subaru all-wheel drive away? It's financing as low as 0% on the all-wheel drive Outback. 0% on the all-wheel drive WRX. 0% on the all-wheel drive Legacy. And 0.9 on the all-wheel drive Forester. Every Subaru is built with all-wheel drive. And every Subaru is at an all-time low through February 28th. So head to the Subaru all-wheel drive away for incredible deals on every Subaru today. This is Carpet Exchange. Here they have such a huge selection of tile. It's amazing. And you brought your consultant here. <laughs> yeah. And the prices here are fabulous. Shop now for President's Day savings. <laughs> we do have a great selection. <laughs> I know we do. Too. The lowest prices guaranteed. This is definitely what I'll take home. You gotta take this home. I will. <laughs> if you don't take it, I'm taking it. <laughs> Shop now with no payments, no interest for six months. Great floors are all we sell. Friends, if you're in the market for a newer used RV and you like saving a ton of money, remember this name, Great American RV. Then come see us in Fife, exit 137 off I-5. Great prices, great service, Great American RV. First for local news, Dan Lewis, Kathy Gertson, Steve Poole, and Eric Johnson. Como for News continues. We cannot allow this process to be endlessly strung out, as Iraq is trying to do right now. Secretary of State Colin Powell says Iraq just keeps playing games, but he's facing an uphill battle trying to get the United Nations to agree to military action. Welcome back to Como 4 News. I'm Dan Lewis. And I'm Kathy Gertson. U.N. weapons inspectors delivered a mixed report today to Security Council members. They found at least one violation, but they say Iraq is cooperating more, and more time will provide more answers. But the U.S. says time is running out. The Security Council today heard that there are unexplained holes in Iraq's weapons declaration. Questions still loom about anthrax and VX nerve agent. And inspectors discovered short-range missiles, similar to this one, that violate U.N. regulations. But they say more time will yield more information. Secretary of State Powell strongly disagreed. What we need is not more inspections. What we need is not more immediate access. What we need is immediate, active, unconditional, full cooperation on the part of Iraq. Powell said a threat of force must remain, and he again linked Iraq to terror groups. But three veto-holding council members, France, Russia, and China, responded with calls for continued inspections and resisted any move toward war. As Americans brace for the possibility of another terrorist attack, President Bush offered some reassuring news. Today, he announced the CIA and the FBI will be working together under one roof. The president says this should lead to better communications between intelligence agencies. Still, many Americans aren't taking any chances. They're stocking up on plastic and duct tape to protect their homes in the event of a chemical attack. But Homeland Security Secretary Tom Ridge says there's no need to begin sealing off rooms in your house right now. Experts at the University of Washington warn the American public might become skeptical as a result of terror alerts, followed by admissions they were based on misinformation. A visiting fellow at the University of Washington worries about overreaction. 
He says putting anti-aircraft batteries on the Capitol Mall runs the risk of creating anxiety, panic, and terror. He says this is the kind of reaction terrorists want. The objective of terrorism is to raise anxiety, raise concern, to sow terror. Uh, we aren't quite at the level of terror, but we certainly are very anxious. Livingston says it's logical for the U.S. to increase security at military bases, but he says public alerts have to be done carefully because the danger is Americans will ignore alert messages later on only to have something terrible happen. In his commentary today, Como Force Ken Schramm says when it comes to the possibility of war in Iraq and terrorism at home, there's more to the question of who you believe. Who you believe depends in part on what you believe. The cab driver I spoke with said he believes Saddam Hussein is eager to sell chemical and or biological weapons to terrorists to be used against us. He wants the government to take him out with or without UN support. The waitress I talked with said she wants to believe the government, but then left her statement incomplete when she paused and said, but. The computer programmer I talked with said she believes the president is too eager to go to war, but holds that may be true because he knows more than we do. And since this is my commentary, here's what I believe. I believe the American public is being deliberately frightened into supporting a war that is both inevitable and necessary. Inevitable because Saddam Hussein is everything we fear. Necessary because he's capable of doing everything we fear. I believe our government may be manipulating us with a heightened alert status. And I believe that frightened people don't always make the best decisions. I believe that less rhetoric and more factual candor from Bush officials would be more convincing about the need for military action. Who we believe probably comes down to who do we trust? The French, the Russians, the Germans? In the end, ultimately, I'll go with our government. Thoughts to share with Ken? Email him at kenschram at comofornews.com.